All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Mortgage Coach 10X Tuesday. Uh, I have rebranded this call because the last quarter of 2023, I was doing these 10X calls and I was getting so much good feedback about them that I'm like, I like the name, I like the energy. Let's let's just call it 10X for the entire year. So, so my goal every time we do one of these calls is to put on the absolute best sales meeting in the mortgage industry this week. Um, and I think it's gonna be pretty easy because I have the legend, the one and only Tim Brahim, who has a lot to share. He's pretty excited about the value he's gonna bring to everyone. What's up, Mr. Brahim? Hey, hey, thanks Dave for having us. And uh, um, thank you to everybody that's tuning in and happy new year. Hope you guys enjoyed football this weekend and you're in full full festive football season. Yeah, no, it is, it is a good time. And uh, 49ers are still in the hunt, so I'm having a good time. Mr. Metal, Josh Metal, thank you for helping you know schedule this, help coming up with the idea of today. Uh, I'm gonna jump off camera once I get you guys introduced. So really, I see it is you're gonna be the leader of the call. But how are you doing, brother? Doing great. Nice to see everybody. Thanks for having us. And I like that 10x as well. I don't know a single mortgage originator who doesn't want to 10x their business right now. So that's what we're gonna talk about. How do we? How do we business plan around 10xing your business? That'll be the theme for the day. Right on. Right on. Well, I am going to ask one question to kick it off of Tim. You know, the, the headline that you and Josh picked was, hope is not a strategy for success. Know your numbers. Execute your plan for abundance. You know, just just tell me, why did you pick that as the headline before I, I have you guys roll? You know, it, thanks for asking that question because it's a perfect tee up to what the topic is for today. So, look, I've owned a lot of businesses in my life. Dave, you've owned a couple now. Josh has owned a couple. And, and I think that we would all agree that successful businesses are run by people who understand the numbers of their business and they're making decisions in their business based upon the understanding of previous numbers and the forecast of future numbers. I mean, you're going to find that universally throughout any business. And it's pretty astonishing when you when you really look at it as to how few loan originators really understand their numbers. In our Leadership 360 program back on July the 4th, or January the 4th, excuse me, a couple of weeks ago, we had a, a Zoom call with the group and there were you know 30 of us on the call. And it was really interesting because the originators that really know their numbers back and forth, Dave, and are making business choices based upon the understanding of those numbers are the ones that actually had really great years last year. Guys like Sam Rosenblatt, Caleb Legrand, Leo Agnola, et cetera. I mean, these guys all had great years in a tough market because when you think about it, it's like if you don't know your numbers, then you're actually kind of flying with blinders on and making emotional business decisions that are not based upon fact and are not based upon intelligent choices. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And we've Josh and I have created a tool that we want to give to everybody on this call that I think is incredibly valuable. And I want to take you through that tool today. And we do a lot of teaching around it. All right. So, guys, you know, I talk about all the time that the, the mortgage professional of the future is not a loan officer. The mortgage professional of the future is a data-driven mortgage advisor. And, and, and knowing your metrics are part of the data, you know, making sure that you're leveraging your database and you're monitoring your database for opportunity signals is part of it. Um, so, hey, I can't wait to, to hear this conversation. I'm going to let you take it away, um, and I'll, I'll jump back in. And then again, remember, everyone, if you have questions, Tim is going to set aside some time at the end for Q&A. So put your questions in as they come up and we'll get to those at the end of the conversation. Let's go guys. Right on, thanks a lot. And and before Josh, you kick us off, you know, like I just wanna be clear, this is me and Josh teaching, it's not just me. So Josh is an incredibly gifted teacher and a dear friend and he's gonna be be doing, uh, adding a lot of value too. So Josh, take it away, brother. Thanks buddy, appreciate it. So I just put a, a quick little comment in the chat and it was from probably the most impactful book that I ever read. And somebody gave it to me at a very young age. I think I was 21 years old when I read this book and it was Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich. And towards the end of that book, he really gets into visualizing and creating a firm construct of where you're going to go into the future. And by revisiting that future vision of where you're going, you, you trigger this thing in the back of your mind called the reticular activator. And every day as you're moving through your life, because you have a firm vision of where you're going, 
you start to find ways to get to that future state that you're trying to achieve. You may not know, when I was 21 years old, I set the goal of owning 100 rental properties. I owned one property at the time. It was a completely unrealistic goal. But I set the goal. I revisited the goal. It was crystal clear in my mind. And over time, that dream became something that I could conceive, believe, and eventually achieve. I set that goal for 20 years. Within the first seven years, we hit that goal. And so what we're going to talk about today is in the last couple of years, we've seen tremendous ups and downs in the mortgage industry. We've seen highs and we've seen very low lows. And I am aware that... Let me ask a quick question. I think we lost Josh. Somebody pop it in the text if you can hear me so I know that it's not on my end. No, it's on Josh's end. You're all okay, good, no Tim. Hear you perfectly. I'll, I'll, I'll take over from here and add to what he's saying. So what the mind can conceive and believe it will achieve. So many of you, maybe a few of you, I should say, Dave knows this. I, I had set a goal back when I was 30 years old to retire by the time I was 40 and to move to Italy. And I set that goal and I built an entire structure in my life to help me get to that goal. What we're talking about today is what is your compass? What is the goal that you're looking to achieve? That's what business planning is. That's what goal setting is. And it needs to be driven by data and understanding the numbers. Josh, you're back. Do you want to continue with what you're saying or do you want me to jump into the spreadsheet, bro? Yeah, what was the last thing you heard? My internet just crashed. Uh, I, I don't remember because I was trying to figure out if it was me or you. <laughs> no worries. I'll fast forward to the punchline. What I've seen over the last year is that people have been have shifted over the last two years from driving in fifth gear 100 miles an hour down the freeway expanding their business and then over the last year they've been in retreat and many that i'm seeing in in, in my team and around me haven't retrenched and decided what's the business plan from here going forward so the tool that tim and i are going to go over with you today is to help you really think through how do I rebuild my team? How do I get to a place where I can conceive and believe 10Xing my business from here? And I would just offer that taking the time to actually visualize where you want to go is very likely a major component in the difference between you making it and you just floating out there and not really having any real agency over where you end up. So Tim, I'll, I'll turn it back over to you and really excited to see the uh, tool that we've created. Great. So again, I'm going to pose a quick question, then I'm going to share my screen. Do you know your numbers? Are you a data-driven loan originator, a business person, more importantly, that is making your business decisions as to where you choose to focus your valuable time, spend your valuable financial resources, and also allocate resources of human power on your team to certain activities? Or are you making those decisions based upon chasing shiny objects, the latest and greatest idea that you heard, the great loan originators that I know, like Caleb LeGrand, like Sam Rosenblatt, like Leo, who I mentioned earlier, and I can go through a long list, Holly Walter, et cetera. They understand their numbers and they make their business decisions based upon those numbers. And the numbers leave clues and show them where there are opportunities for improvement. Okay, so what we've created for you that I'm gonna share right now, and Josh and I worked on this for a couple of months, is a business planning tool that is driven by you knowing your numbers. Now, the thing I wanna establish is this, is I'm going to go through this tool with you right now, and I'm going to create an avatar of an originator. You need to, once you have this tool, which will be giving you a link to go to to where you can download it for free, once you have this tool, you need to go through this tool and to the best of your ability, fill in the fields based upon the information that you have. If you have super accurate data, perfect. If you don't, I need you to get as close as possible realistically with estimates because it's going to reveal a lot of information for you and then drive next action. So here we go. All right. So let's just start with the pledge right here at the top. I owe it to myself and my myself, my family and my team and my legacy to seize the most of my potential every day. The genius is in the execution. All right. So this is a three tab spreadsheet that we've created for you and it's locked down. 
The fields that are not locked down are in yellow and you'll be responsible for filling those in. I will take you through each of these tabs over the course of the next 20 to 30 minutes and we're going to be teaching along the way and I'll be asking Josh to play color commentator at times where he would like to. And then at the end of this, okay, we're going to share with you some resources that you have access to and then we're going to do Q&A. So make sure that you hold those questions because we're happy to answer them for you. All right, so we're going to start with assumptions team right here. Average gross income per loan. You should know this number by now. If you don't know it, go back over the last 12 to 18 months and figure it out. Divide in your gross revenues by the number of, of loans you did and you'll come up with that number. In this avatar's case, I've put $4,000 average gross commissions per loan. I'm in California. Full disclosure, so the numbers may sound a little big to some of you in certain areas, including taxes, all right? The next, the next topic is desired annual income from my origination business. How much money do you want to make in 2024? Okay, you, you, ho you hopefully know at least what your goal is by now. I've plugged in $500,000 into this avatar's particular field. Okay, you can change the numbers. I'll just show you real quick. You can put in 400,000 or 40,000 in this case. I'll put it back to 500,000, all right. Next, number of hours that I desire to work per week. I've plugged in 40. I want to live a balanced life. I want to make sure that I unplug when I get home, be with my family, connect, connect with my friends, connect with myself, etc. Number of weeks that I desire to take off on vacation, completely off the grid. To some of you, this may sound outlandish at six, but I can tell you that I religiously took eight as an originator every single year off the grid, not checking in. And I can tell you that my, my co-pilot here, Josh Metal, does a fabulous job of this, probably more than eight weeks out of the year, uh, is, is my best guess, knowing him so intimately. So you plug that number in too. How many weeks do you want to take off where you're not tapped in? Now, what that generates for you is the total number of weeks worked annually is 46, and it creates a very important number here, team your hourly rate of pay. Now, why is this an important number? Because every one of you is paid by the hour. Whether you realize it or not, you've always been an hourly paid employee in this business. The difference is that in this business, you choose your hourly rate of pay. Very different from being an employee that gets a fixed number, 40 bucks an hour, 50 bucks an hour, et cetera, like your processor. You get to choose your hourly rate of pay based upon where you choose to spend your time. And if you're choosing to spend your time on activities that are low payoff activities, your hourly rate of pay goes down. And if you're choosing to spend them on high payoff, then your hourly rate of pay goes up. Now, why does this number uh, highlight such importance? Because if you're saying to yourself, I wanna make $271.74 an hour, then believe me, you need to be vigilant as to what you choose to say yes to and what you choose to say no to. If it's not something you would pay to someone $271 an hour to do, then why are you saying yes to it? Now you may say, well, I don't have staff. I have a skeleton crew. I've let people go. Yep, that's how employees think. If you want to be a successful business person, data driven by your numbers, you're going to look at a number like that and you say, you know, I cannot afford to do some of the things that I'm doing because it's costing me a fortune. And I need to bring somebody aboard that I can cross train and that can handle some of these activities for me so I can focus on higher payoff activities like generating business, marketing, strategic planning, etc. Um, and, and, and driving up my numbers. Okay, important number there. Now let's move to step one. How many loans do I need to do to cover my expenses? All right, this is an important field. Current monthly personal expenses and business. How much does it cost to run your life? Personal and business. If you don't know these numbers, you need to know these numbers. This is such a perfect example team of where people make rash and, and fear-based decisions. I, I remember coaching a woman uh, about a decade ago now who used to do 20 to 25 loans a month and business slowed down a ton and she was down to 13 or 14 loans a month and she was about ready to jump off of a building. I mean, she wanted to fire everybody on her team. She was gonna maybe sell her house and downsize. I'm like, whoa, whoa, let's pump the brakes here a minute. What's it cost to run your life? Well, she didn't know. So I gave her the coaching assignment over the next 30 days to know those numbers. Hire a part-time bookkeeper, understand the numbers. We backed into the number. She only needed to do eight loans a month to break even. Yet she was about ready to start making rash decisions. So you need to know this number. In this avatar's case, I put 20 grand between business and personal to live this avatar's life. Next number is your tax bracket. This will really be the, the, the tip off that I live in the state of California, 45% combined state and federal. Um, and, and yours will be different if you live in a different state. Like if, if you're in Utah or Josh is at, it's, I don't know, it's probably, you know, 
half. Probably somewhere in the neighborhood, <laughs> half of that, okay? All right, but you got to plug that number in, and here's why. It will then gross up these numbers. So the gross before tax income needed to meet my monthly expenses is $36,364. Important number to know. Annual income needed to break even is $436,000. $364, kind of a coincidence that those numbers are so similar there. And the number of loans that I need to do per month to break even is 9.09. .09. Okay, now we're starting to drill down. Now we're starting to get somewhere. Trust me, when you get access to the spreadsheet, it's going to be very revealing when you start plugging in numbers and looking at them going, oh, wow. Okay, so let's go to step two. Where is the business going to come from? This is where we start to need to ask some, some really rhetorical questions. So let's start with this one right here, client database. And let's go to line 23. I have a database of this many clients. So this avatar has 500 clients. So let me define a database. This is not how many people who you have in your electronic Rolodex of which 75% of them you never talked to before. Okay, what, I'm, what I look at as a database is people that I have a relationship with. I've either done a loan for them or I've talked to them about doing a loan and they chose to not go with me, but I'm going to adopt the loan in the future or friends, family members, etc. How many people do I have access to that know me that would, if they received something from me, they would know who I was? In this avatar's case, I put 500. Okay, on average, my clients do a new loan once every plug in a number. If it's three, put three. If it's five, put five. Whatever it is, I picked, I think, a very conservative number. Obviously, over the last couple of years, most of your database hasn't done a new loan, but hopefully in the very near future, there a lot of them are going to do loans when rates drop. And I think it's very fair to say that between selling your home and refining your home, that every five years or so, conservatively, the people in your database are going to do a loan of some kind. It may be a HELOC, it may be a debt consolidation loan, it may be a new, uh, a second home or a rental property, but that's an important number to get to get comfortable with and plug in there. Now, closing ratio on eligible loans from my past clients. Well, look, if you're a good database manager, which I was for sure as an originator, and I know many of them who are, my closing ratio is at least 50% on my past client database. But if you're not doing a great job of staying in touch with your past client database, you want to change it to 10%, change it to 10%. Okay, whatever the number is that you think conservatively would be the approximate percentage of those loans that you would get, because hopefully you're staying in touch with them. When we get into tab two, and we start to talk about next actions, you'll see why this is important. Okay, so what does this tell me? The transactions from current clients. There is an opportunity for me on an average annualized basis for me to do 50 loans a year just from my past client database, which is 4.17 a month, which gets me about 45% of the way to my break even. Okay, so that's an important bucket there, that database. And the question you need to be asking is, how do I get this number up to 60%, 65, 70%? What spreadsheets in the uh, in, in trust engine and the mortgage coach total cost analysis, et cetera, do I need to be sending out to people to make sure that I'm staying in front of them? Your database is your recurring revenue. It's your lifeblood. You need to be focusing on it on a religious basis, and these numbers are telling us that by just looking at them. Line 27, the percentage of my clients likely to give me at least one referral per year. So you got 500 clients. How many of them do you think will give you at least one referral a year? I put 10% in here for hypothetical purposes. Maybe it's five, you can change it to whatever you want. You know the story. All right, so therefore, if I'm getting referrals from my class past client database and I'm getting 10% of my clients to send me a referral, well, that's 50 more loans and 4.17 a month. But what's my, con or 50 more leads, I should say, and 4.17 leads a month. What's the closing ratio on referrals from my past clients? And I plugged in 35% here. So one out of every three referrals that I get from past clients, I end up closing. What's that tell me? I'm gonna do 17 and a half loans in the next year on average, and 1.46 a month. So my database if we go down here to line 31, it's worth 67 and a half loans a year, 5.63 loans a month. Now, again, a little teaching moment here. The question you should be asking yourself is, how do I get my past client database to refer more business to me? The great loan originators understand their numbers, as I said before, and they look at a number like 35% and they say, wow, why is it that I'm only getting one out of every three referrals from my past clients to say yes to me? And what do I need to do to improve that number? 
We're going to get a little bit more into that right now as we go to referral partners when it comes to improving that number. So the number of referrals per strategic partner, strategic partner, realtor, accountant, financial planner, divorce attorney, et cetera, okay? So the, 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 we're going to just pick a number here, a conservative number, that I get one deal, one lead, one qualified lead a month from my referral partners, 12 a year. How many of them do I have? Number of strategic referral partners, let's say you have 10. Don't count the people that don't give you any deals that you're pursuing. I'm talking about the people that you actually have a relationship with here. We need to be realistic with these numbers. So between my accountants, my divorce attorneys, my financial planners, my realtors, I've got 10, and they give me a deal a month, right? So I'm getting, you know, roughly 10 at-bats a month, which is 120 at-bats a year. What's my closing ratio? 25%. All right, so I close one out of every four of these referrals that I get from these strategic partners, which is 30 deals a year or two and a half deals a month. Now, teaching point. If you're getting 25%, you have to ask yourself the question, why are three out of every four people not saying yes to me? And what can I do to improve that number? Might it be that some of my referral partners are getting their leads from unqualified sources and therefore maybe they're not worth as much time as I'm spending on them and we're going to get into that in the next uh, on the third tab when we're looking at your batting average so stay put for that might it be that I haven't taught them how to refer me correctly so let me give you a quick script okay if you want to learn how to, to to enter into a dialogue with a referral partner on how to refer you differently you simply start by saying you know what I was on this zoom call this week with a couple of teachers in the mortgage industry and one of the things that they brought up was that, you know, I've never actually asked you how you would like me to endorse you. I mean, you've been kind enough to refer people to me, and I'm acutely aware of the fact that we need to be a team. And when I talk to your client for the first time, or our prospective client for the first time, there are things that I should be saying about you to edify you and to really cement the relationship that you have with that person that you could never say about yourself without it sounding like you were being arrogant. So educate me, teach me what your value proposition is. If you don't have one, let me help you. Let's make sure that when you hand them off to me, I say all of the things about you that you would want me to say that you might not be comfortable saying. Stop and listen. I guarantee you that's never gonna be a tough conversation. Every one of them is gonna be grateful. They've never had anybody ask them that before. And after they've gotten done explaining and maybe you've helped them massage it and you've repeated back to them what you're gonna say on their behalf, you then wanna say, now, hey, do you mind if I share with you how I would like you to talk about me to make sure that, again, we're working cohesively as a team? They're gonna say yes every time because they would feel like an idiot saying no after you've just teed them up in that way. Now you have the opportunity to share with them how you wanna be referred. Trust me on this. I used to get referrals from, from people like Richard Blythe and Terry Morler, two of my best referral sources. They were like, there was nothing to close. They were already done because of the way they referred them to me. And that number wasn't 25% from those two referral sources. It was like 90% from those two referral sources because of the way they referred me. And this is where knowing your numbers is really important. All right, so step three, where will my plan land me? Number of loans that I'm gonna do per month based upon the numbers above is 8.73. The average income that I'm earning per loan is 4,000. The total income from loan origination that I'm gonna earn is 418,800. That's short of that 500,000 that we had plugged in at the top of the spreadsheet. But there's another source of income here. Maybe you have dividend income, interest income. Maybe you have rental property like Josh Metal does. Maybe you have a spouse who works and earns a good income. You gotta plug that number in right here. So any additional sources of income, we've left a box for you to plug in here. So 100 grand. All right, so the summary. The current plan versus my needs. My current financial needs are $436,364 before tax. We established that up top. My current goal is $500,000. My total income is $518,800 between my origination business and the numbers above and my additional income. So I'm banking this amount of money on an annualized basis. I'm fine. Now, if you go up here and you chop this down to you know, 25%, closing ratio on your past client database, look what happens. Now all of a sudden you're negative. Now you're not making enough money and you're dipping into your savings account. So it's really, really important that you play with this tool and allow it to teach you what you need to focus on. Josh, before I go to the plan for execution, 
which is action steps to execute on this plan. Do you have anything that you want to add, brother? Yeah, what's coming up for me, Tim, is a quote from Robin Sharma. And he says that what gets measured gets improved. And I know from running my team through an exercise very similar to this before we created this, that when we went back and looked at the data, every single person that was in that training realized I'm either not getting enough leads, I'm not getting them to the application stage, I'm not getting to the pre-approval stage. Like they found weaknesses, chinks in their armor. But if you don't take the time to zoom out and do the work, you actually have to do the work and measure, you don't, you don't earn the insights that you need to really change your business. So I just encourage everybody that, to take the time and get it in your calendar to do this exercise because the insights will be incredible for you. Dave, you're on and I wanna, you want to say something, bro? Yeah, I want to just have a little interaction from everybody watching it because conversion is king. And I've interviewed enough loan officers to, to completely validate what Tim said, the best of the best know their numbers and the best of the best obsess over conversion and achieving their you know their day-to-day, week-to-week win. So I would ask anyone listening to this right now, whether you're watching the video of it or you're live, if you know your conversion, you know, app to loan, share that with us. I'd love to just see some examples of that. And I love the way, Tim, you're breaking it down on past clients and, and breaking down conversion in different ways. But guys, if you know your conversion numbers, share them with us. Dave, let me give you a specific example of that. So Caleb Woodrand, who I mentioned before, who's a longtime client and friend, who's a terrific originator, averages out last year averaged 25 closings a month. About 10 years ago, we were looking at his numbers and, and, and he knows them like the back of his hand. And one of the things that he recognized was that like he had a doctor nurse type setup, right? So Melissa on his team would take the initial intake, send out the electronic application, run credit, all those types of things, and then set up the appointment to meet with him. And what we realized through looking at the granular numbers was that if it was something like 55% of all people that he met with closed, but there was a gap between Melissa and him. And it was like only, I think 26% or 28% of the people that she talked to ended up closing ultimately. So we had this gap, like what, what do we need to do? These numbers are telling us something. So he said, we need to take a look at the scripting. What is it that Melissa is saying? How is she edifying Caleb? How is she making sure she is creating a perception of value of what it would be like to meet with an expert in finance as it used to be a CPA? And I worked with the two of them on her scripting and boom, we popped like 14% within a, a 90 day period of time. And that equated to an extra seven or eight deals a month just in looking at the scripting the baton pass between his nurse to him as the doctor and tightening that up made a substantial difference by her being able to establish the value that they'd be receiving by meeting with him and then once they got in front of him he'd close them every time but you wouldn't know that if you didn't know your numbers and that's why this is so important all right let's get back to the wait, wait one one more yeah. call out on caleb caleb is like he's not a grandmaster he's like a grandmaster 5x like truly one of the top loan officers ensuring that every customer he serves is getting his APAX experience. He's yep. they're getting a total cost analysis. And then to Tim's point, they're breaking down all the high impact points in the process to make sure they're just crushing it. Anyways. All right, so we're gonna fly through the rest of the spreadsheet here. Um, it won't take as long to do the other two tabs. So tab two, important, my plan for execution. All right. so. I want to establish something. You're going to just simply change the date in your spreadsheet to whatever the date is that you start doing this tracking. So today is the 23rd. So I'm going to go 1, 23, and you see that everything sequentially changes. We've built this out for you for a full year to be able to track things. Okay, so you've got every calendar day of the year there. So let's talk about communication with the client database. All right, we've put some examples of things Josh and I feel that you need to be doing to substantially improve your database communications here, and we want you to track them in this spreadsheet. So I'm going to give you a few examples. Call five people a day in my database to connect with them. Now, you're just going to simply, when you do it, you're going to check the box. It's going to total it up over here so you can keep track of yourself and make sure you're holding yourself accountable. Maybe you can gamify this with people in your office, etc. Send out my monthly newsletter. 
film a video and send out with HomeBot on a monthly basis. Send out a weekly market update video or educational email. Now I can get into all kinds of teaching, but for the sake of, around these topics, like scripting for your database and all that, but for the sake of time, I don't, I'm not gonna get into that right now, but you need to be doing these things. And when you get this spreadsheet and you download it, you're gonna see all the examples that we've given you here of what we consider to be best practices to nurture in your database based upon not only what we've done, but all of our peers within my Leadership 360 program, which some of the great teachers in the industry are doing and doing successfully. Consumer Direct. So create three reels for Instagram weekly. Send out 500 or 5,000 direct mail pieces um, for HELOC debt consolidation mon monthly. Send out a uh, $500 worth of YouTube pay-per-click ads monthly. And if you're not, if you don't know what that is, by the way, you need to look into that because I know too many people are having great success with YouTube pay-per-click. And if you want more info on that, you can go to my podcast, The 360 Experience, and I believe it's the December 15th interview with Michael Regan, where he's talking about how he's getting three, four deals a month from pay-per-click on YouTube. Then we go to realtors, call three agent partners and ask about their biggest challenge and, and strategies on how to help solve them. Go on caravan with my agents twice a month, hosting one to many presentation, uh, a quarter bulletproof buyer process. You guys probably know about that from teachings of Brian Grant, Mark Robertson, Josh Metal, et cetera. Uh, meet with three agents a month and train them on bid over ask for buy versus rent, list reports, things of that nature. So you get the point here. We're giving you some next actions that we're gonna suggest. You can create some of your own, but this is where we're starting to get into business planning. We know the numbers, All right? Now, what actions do I need to take to make sure those numbers get fulfilled or in fact exceeded and increased? Financial advisors and CPAs, deliver a one page rate sheet to CPAs every, every month and once a week during tax season. Team, it's tax season right now. I, I, I made a living off of tax season. Everybody hates tax season. I love tax season. That's when I would put a rate sheet every single Monday in front of the CPAs that I worked with to make sure that they were educated and knowledgeable about what's happening in interest rates right now. Think about it for a minute. They don't want to get in front of their clients and not have that information. They want to look good. They want to make sure that they're proactively advising their clients. You need to be talking to CPAs right now about some of the debt consolidation loans that you're doing. You need to show them some of the cool tools that you have access to through Dave's platform and how you can and how you can get people out of a, a precarious financial situation with their, you know, 30% interest rate credit card debt, et cetera. I mean, that, that action item right there, if you just implement that and get in front of CPAs right now, if you say, I don't have any CPAs, ask people for introductions. Go to all your realtors and say, hey, who do you work for with as a CPA? Could you please introduce them to me? Go to the second page of all the tax returns that you did last year and send the final CD to the CPAs proactively saying, I know that you're going to need this for tax preparation purposes coming up for our mutual client, Jane Doe. And, oh, by the way, I'd love to sit down with you and just share with you a few things that I've been able to do for clients right now that have been helping them um, in, in, in the financial markets with all that's going on with, with high revolving credit card debt. Have, a, uh, have lunch with one financial advisor a month, discuss debt management strategies. Let me skip down to miscellaneous. This is the easiest one you'll ever implement. You won't be able to track its success. You're just going to have to trust me. It will pay off. Send two handwritten note cards a day. Two a day, 10 a week, 520 a year. Don't put your business card in there. Just write a handwritten note card twice a day to somebody in your database. Just want to say hi, happy new year, thinking about you. I hope you're doing well. If there's anything that you need, just let me know. I'm always here as a resource for you. If you discipline yourself just to doing that, you will get deals because you'll be top of mind consciousness and the loan officer with the most friends wins. And that's what we're really doing here is building friendships. Spend 30 minutes a day, two days a week on self-education, CMA, CMPS, underwriting guidelines, etc. You can go through in more detail when you download this template. Let's move to the final template, unless you have something you want to add, Josh. Uh, just a little tip from, from teaching this. The item on this list that you have the most amount of resistance to is likely the one you need to attack. It's likely the hole in your business plan that you need to confront. And it's only by digging into those numbers and going, gosh, there it is again. I still have resistance to it. That's the horse we got to get back on. Great point. Great point. Okay. The final tab is going to be an interesting one for you to on an ongoing basis explore. So I used to have one of these on my desk. You can see it. If you can see a little box here, it's called a yellow legal pad. Fortunately today we have something a little more sophisticated than that. Why did I have a yellow legal pad on my desk? Because I realized that I needed to track my batting average. 
if I'm really going to know my numbers, I really need to get granular in understanding why I'm swinging and missing, why people are saying no to me. That's how I'm going to improve my scripting. And that's mm -hmm. how I'm going to improve my relationships with my referral partners. So what we've done here is we've created some fields for you to fill in. Now, when I go over here, I just want you to understand these are locked. These will track your batting average automatically for you. So you can't play around with them anyway. But what you do want to do, if we go down, we've got January, February, March. If you need to create more line items because you get more leads in this, fantastic. You can add those line items. So when you get a new lead, you simply want to put the person's name in here. Bill Jones. Who is the referral source? Real estate agent by the name of Mary Johnson. What was the result? I realized that it could take you know, a month or two before you filled this field in. But ultimately, what was the result? Did they go with you or did they not go with you? Yes, Bill went with me. Great. So if I look over here, I've got a batting average of 500 because I have two yeses and I have two noes. So I have a conversion ratio that's pretty strong. Let's look at Mary Jackson. Referred to me by CPA Richard Blythe. Did she go with me? No. Here's the key question. Why? When somebody decides to not go with you, it's incumbent upon you to say something along these lines. You know, Josh, I'm, I'm really sorry that I didn't do a great job of displaying my value to you in a manner that would have you wanting to work with me. And that's on me. And I wanted to say thank you for having the opportunity to, to even have these discussions with you. Um, if you don't mind, because I'm looking to try to improve upon the services that I provide and the value position, proposition that I display, could you could you share with me why you chose to not work with me? It'd be really valuable for me to understand that. And when they tell you why, you need to put it down. Fees were too high. Rate was too high. You didn't get back to me promptly enough. I went with my credit union. You know all the stories. I went with an online lender, etc. It's important for you to know why you're swinging and missing so you can improve upon it. Let me tell you a quick story. I used to lose deals all the time to a lender that Dave remembers. It was called Ditech Funding down in Orange County, California. They used to have these billboards all over the, the freeway, the 405 freeway in Southern California. And they used to consistently advertise interest rates that were a quarter of a percent better in rate than I could get. And I, I looked at my yellow legal pad after doing this for a period of time and I kept seeing Ditech. I was losing five, six deals a month to them. So I, shit, I, this is a lot of money here. I mean, I make four grand alone. That's, that's like twenty to $25,000 a month that I'm losing. We're talking about life changing here. So what did I do? I picked up the phone and I played consumer and I called Ditech and I started asking a lot of intelligent questions. And when I asked them the question, can you lock me in on that interest rate right now and guarantee that it will be locked in for a long enough period of time for me to close my refinance? The answer was, no, actually, we don't lock the rate in until the time of full approval. Now, this is before DUNLP and underwriting that was quick, okay? So what that meant was they were floating me, which was a full bait and switch opportunity for them. But here's the other kicker. They were quoting me 10-day mandatory pricing. Now, if you don't know what that is, that means that you have to close the loan within 10 days or there's what's called a pair-off fee, which is a substantial fee. So they're not going to lock you in on a 10-day mandatory delivery you know, on a refi with a three-day right of rescission and two weekends embedded in that time frame. I'm quoting 45-day best efforts. So we're talking apples and oranges. So now I had all the information that I needed to sell against them. And I modified my scripting and I proactively brought them up in every person that I talked to and said, I'm sure you've seen the billboards and if you've talked to them, I want to make sure you understand why their rates are lower and you should ask them these questions. And people would come back to me all the time and say, you know what, you're right. They can't lock me on on there. And I say, well, I think you need to ask yourself the question, is that the lender you want to work with that would start off a relationship with misleading information? All of a sudden, three or four extra deals a month I'm getting that I wasn't getting before. And that's why it's important that you understand the numbers in this spreadsheet. So let's go back to this. In closing, I want you to track everybody that you get deals from because you're also going to start to see patterns of certain referral partners that have a very low batting average and others that have a very high batting average. And when they have a very high batting average, you probably want to ask them, can I ask you how it is that you're going about referring people to me so you can learn their script and teach it to the people who have a low batting average and simply say to the real estate agent that, hey, you know, I've been kind of tracking these numbers and I've gotten seven leads from you and thank you so much in the last two months and I only closed one of them 
and I'm sure you know so-and-so down the street, and they all want to be competitive with each other. I've gotten three from her, and I've closed all of them, and so I took the time over coffee to ask her how she's referring people to me, because I think it's really valuable for us to be working as a team. Let me share with you her script. This is all important stuff in a market like this when there's so few deals and you need to make the most out of every opportunity. So again, and I'm gonna turn it over to Josh and, um, and just say that like, I'm gonna give you the link to download this spreadsheet and for you to use, and we're gonna be available to answer your questions here in a little bit. Go ahead, Josh. So I, I wanna go back to the, the Pareto principle just real quickly. You know, the Pareto principle is that 20% of the people in an industry create 80% of the abundance. Why do you think that is? Well, having coached a lot of LOs, having run a successful team now for a couple of decades, I realized that 20% of the people in our industry are willing to do the work. 20% are willing to wake up early and work on their business instead of in their business. This is one of those work on your business versus in your business activities that makes all the difference because it it the sharpening that happens as you go through this process changes this this worksheet this and this business planning tool it changes the way you operate from day to day and what i'm aware of is a lot of us just run through our days on this program just into the office reactive we're not really taking the time to zoom out do the work Go through the anal the analysis here, and then change your plans and actually put it into action. So, I share that with you because I want each of you on this call today to be part of that twenty percent. And what that requires of you is download the tool, create a calendar invitation or appointment with yourself, make time in your schedule to do this. It's not going to get easier in our industry. I mean, rates will improve, but we will continue to see more and more competition. We have to get better. Uh, Jim Rome, you know, great quote, don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. So I just wanna challenge and encourage everybody on this call, decide right now. You're gonna be part of the 20% who's actually gonna take the time for yourself to invest into this business planning tool. Great, well said, well said, bro. Um, I'm going to, transition now to sharing something exciting with everybody that um, we've been working on for a very long time. And then after we're done with that, um, which will take about five minutes, we're going to do Q&A for anybody that has questions and, and help in any way we can. So you may, may or may not know that a long time ago, um, I created something called Loan Toolbox. And this was back in 2001, and it became one of the standards of education within the mortgage space. Um, and it was a, a, a very, very helpful platform for originators across the country. About a year and two months ago, I started designing this generation's loan toolbox, an entirely different level of educational platform that, as Ryan Grant has called it, is the MBA for the mortgage industry. You know, there isn't a, an MBA to earn in the mortgage industry, and this is as close to it as you can get. But I didn't want to do this on my own. I wanted to do it with my friends. I'm very, very blessed to have a lot of very dear friends who are some of the great teachers in the mortgage industry, like Josh Metal, like Ryan Grant, like Craig Strant, like Caleb Legrand, like Tyler Osby. I mean, it's a very long list. So I went to them and I said, let's create something amazing together. Let's create a community. Let's create an educational learning platform. And let's bring continual ongoing live education to the industry in a way that nobody's ever done it before, including myself in the past in the Loan Toolbox days. So <clears throat> what I wanna do is just show you very quickly uh, a quick little PowerPoint slide um, of the platform, which is the Loan Atlas. Um, let me just, uh, can, you, can you see this okay? And does it show the screen being split with boxes at the bottom, Josh, or is it, a, is it just the slide? Just the slide. Okay, great. So let me rip through this. So what is the Loan Atlas? It's a faculty of teachers that has funded over $27 billion in production. As I mentioned, I mean, many of them are top producers in the industry right now. Many of them are legendary teachers that you've known about, like Danny Harani, Harani and, and, and Ryan Grant and, and, and Mark Robertson and, I mean, Josh Metal, et cetera, and, of course, myself. They're over currently. This is currently 
and this number is going to double in the next six months. There are over 150 video tutorials and over 40 hours of educational content currently in the Atlas. We just launched on January the 8th. This is not YouTube videos. This is not screen shares on Zoom. This is high quality, post-produced educational content that is delivered in an incredibly unique way that involves you having learning manuals that go with it, notes, et cetera, that you can take within the platform. The topics, let's talk about some of the topics, <clears throat> excuse me, that you will, you will learn in depth and detail in the Atlas. Database marketing, team building, hiring, training, and culture, the perfect loan process, marketing to referral partners, social media and consumer direct marketing, technology systems of efficiency, networking, time and task management, sales scripting from pros like myself, Ryan Grant, Josh, Tyler Osby, et cetera. I mean, all of our scripts are in there, dozens of them, delivered in, in, in both video and written format, personal development, mindset, health and wellness, and leadership. <clears throat> now, it is not just a learning platform of stagnant content, although there is a ton of it, as I said, over 150 videos currently, but it is also a lot of live content. So every single month we have a masterclass. The two moderators are our head of faculty, Craig Strent and Josh Metal, who's on this call with me. This first masterclass was with Mark Bowie on social media marketing. It was absolutely off the charts fantastic. There were so many comments saying, this is the best social media marketing call that I've ever been on before. Mark Bowie's follow-up call with live Q&A is on February 1st. Every month we have a new masterclass on a new subject taught by one of our faculty members. Every month you have live coaching with me, the final Friday of every month, talk to Tim live. Every Monday you get a voice broadcast tip from us on something you should be doing right now in your business. Every week there will be office hours with the faculty, like you're at a university, where you can get live free coaching as a part of being a part of the platform. You look and say, oh, Josh Metal's got office hours on Tuesday at four o'clock. I think I'll zoom in and ask him some questions on some of the things that I've learned from him. We are bringing unprecedented value to the industry folks and in, in, in what we're creating here. I'm in the process of working on a major project with Josh and a couple other people right now to create an entire marketing library PowerPoint presentations, lunch and learns, marketing documents for realtors, accountants, financial planners, marketing documents to your database. For those of you that remember from Loan Toolbox, we had this thing called Platinum Plus. This is going to be even better. Scripts and presentation tools. Give me, give you an example. The number five loan originator in the country and Heckam Loans is Trevor Carlson. He's on our faculty. He's given us all of his PowerPoint presentations on how he educates seniors on reverse mortgages. Um, the community is going to be the core of this. We have live message boards, and our goal is to have everybody helping each other um, on a consistent basis, posting in the boards, asking questions, and assisting each other grow in their business. We have an entire library of everything from worksheets and checklists to scripts to templates and guides to audios. Um, my podcast in full is in there. Um, it's, it's very robust. Now, <clears throat> the cost of the Loan Atlas is $349 a month, but we have a discount for Mortgage Coach users, which is $249 a month, which is 30% off. It's a year commitment, okay? I don't think that you're gonna be disappointed, and in fact, my goal is passionately to exceed your expectations in every way and have you be like, wow, I get all of this unbelievable amount of coaching that's so much more than anything that's available out there and I'm getting it at a fraction of the cost. I mean, most people have to pay between 10 and $20,000 to get coached. You're gonna pay you know, a third of that at most um, and, and with the discount, 25% you know, of that to get coached by a whole team of coaches. Um, you go to, to download the, the, the template that we just went over, the business planning template for free. Go to this link, theloanatlas.com forward slash MC dash exclusive. That's where you'll find the link. There's also a video of five minutes in length that I encourage you to watch on the subject matter of the Loan Atlas so you can get more of a feel for it. I didn't want to play the video in, in this because we want to get to the Q&A, but watch that video and it will give you a lot better feel for how valuable this content is. And then if you want to, to uh, get a demo of it, we can also demo it for you as well. So just download the link of what we gave you for free. And then if you're interested in the Loan Atlas, let us know. Um, let me unshare my screen here, Josh. Dave, do you want to share anything before we dive into the Q&A for the last 10 minutes? Well, first, you know, good to have you back. 
so active um, providing coaching and scaling for the masses. You know, Tim has always in my mind been, you know, the GOAT, you know, the, the greatest data-driven mortgage advisor of all time. And it's beautiful to see you uh, put so much love and energy into a new platform. I love the way you, um, you're doing it with the community of some of the best uh, mortgage coaches in the country. You know, I, I, so I'm a, I'm a big fan. Everyone listen to this. I do believe, you know, this is something special. This, this is going beyond a YouTube video. This is like courseware, community coaching that will, will turn load off to the data-driven mortgage advisor. So Tim, thanks. It's good to have you back in this role in the industry on a bigger scale. So I'm pumped. Thank you. And uh, would love to see questions. Also, give us a reaction. What are your What are your thoughts on this call? You know, did we execute on the best sales meeting uh, this week? Give us some little reactions to that. Um, there is a link. Josh posted that to Loan Atlas, and then um, for the planning tool, um, what link do they go to to get the planning tool? That That's the link. Okay, so it's yeah, the same that's link. The link. That's the link to the planning tool. Yeah. And then there's a video on there about Loan Atlas. And then if, if you decide you want to explore the Loan Atlas further, you just go to www.thelonatlas.com. Yeah. So but guys, that, but that, I link, that, link is, that link is for your free planning tool. Got it. So I just clicked on it, guys. Pretty straightforward. You know, there is a place to become um, a Loan Atlas member. There's more details on this. Share this with your mortgage friends. And uh, I'm trying to see where is the link for the planning oh, tool. You were almost That's there. At the bottom. You were at, oh, you were right at here. Answer. Yeah. Okay. See it right there, guys. So yeah. scroll down, get this link. And Tim, thanks for also doing something special for the mortgage coach community. Of course. We appreciate that um, yeah. that discount. All right. So put some questions. questions in down below, folks. Put some questions. Also, I would like to know why well, I didn't get people volunteering their conversion. I would love, give me just a simple reaction, a thumbs up. If, if you've got a good handle on what your conversion is, uh, give us a little thumbs up if you have a handle on that. That's an easy ask. That's not asking too much. Um, How about some thumbs know. downs if you don't? <laughs> <laughs> so, we could get, so we could get a little bit of a, so we can know the numbers. You know? Yeah, right, right. Or, okay. or just give, us, that, give us the open mouth if you don't have one. Give us the open mouth, like, oh it's, it's my okay gosh. If, it's okay if you don't, because I, here's how I would look at it if you don't. I would look at it like, wow, what an opportunity is in front of me if I did. I'm telling you, like, when you think about a team, like I've owned, Dave knows I've owned restaurants, you know, I've owned coaching companies, I've owned Loan Toolbox, I own Loan Atlas, I mean, I've owned like six companies. I make all of my business decisions based upon numbers. Josh, your, your real estate empire is entirely based upon you knowing the numbers. You know, it's it, any business has to survive on that metrics. Yeah, I mean, I, I, we were talking about this previously, Tim, you know, the, the first 10 years of our investment um, into real estate, we were just a break even business for 10 years. And then we just made a decision, look, every month, we're going to sit down and review the P&L for every single one of these properties. And then we're going to make decisions based on the numbers. And things changed dramatically from that point forward. In my mortgage world, coming from a loan officer to a team leader and eventually to a branch manager, as soon as I started sitting down and disciplining myself to work on the business by going through the P&L every single month, I made drastically better decisions and drastically more money. So it is one of those things that if you if you create the space in your schedule to do it and you gain the insights, your business will improve. Period. You will make more money. I want to. I, I want to. I just saw something pop up in the chat here from I think it's Kathy. Now it's leaving my screen, saying that the tool needs. Or no, from Alan saying the tool sheet needs to to be unprotected. What is the password? So. Are you saying it's important for me to understand that you're saying that you're not able to change the yellow fields in the way and, and what you downloaded because you should be able to. We've protected it because we don't want you to be able to change the fields that are formulaic, right? So I need to know that because you cannot change the yellow fields. Okay, sit tight. I will have my team take care of that for you. I my sincere apologies. I'm glad that I saw that in the chat, and we will make sure. Um, Okay, so somebody says here says click enable works great. Okay, so some people are having success. 
Um, okay, so just click enable and, and you guys are fine. Thumbs up me on that to confirm. So I'm not going to have to re-upload another spree. Okay, great. Thanks, Ryan. Okay. All right. Now questions. Let's, let's do a little teaching here in the last five, six minutes we have. We want to help you guys. What, what do you guys need? Anything that, that you need help with? Come on, guys. We got, we got four minutes left with Tim Bernie. And Josh Metal, give us give us give us a question. Let's go. Hey, Tim, so I'm so gonna, occupied with downloading the spreadsheet. I, I know. Time to and, come up with any questions. And, and I'm I'm gonna throw one in. You know, you know, I've been doing a lot of interviews this this month, getting everybody ready to recruit realtors. And I have been asking people on my interviews. Uh, you know, of all the total cost analysis that you're doing right now, what, which one is the most valuable to win with agents? And, you know, by and large, I'm hearing like the, the cost of waiting or the buy now TCA. But what are, what are your thoughts on for, you know, all the mortgage coaches on this call? What, what are the TCAs that they should really be training on and using to win with realtors? I'm going to, I'm going to, kick that over to Josh. I have an opinion, but I, my, my sense is Josh is even more qualified than me. I'm going to try to tell this story as succinctly as possible. Thanks, Tim. I was talking to a first-time home buyer the other day. He had spoken to five other loan officers. And as I was going through my, my dreams and goals call, I asked him about, you know, he's looking at a multi-unit property and trying to find uh, an ability to have some version of ca cash flow in that property within the next year or two. And I realized that after spiking to five other loan officers, he didn't know the difference between a temporary rate down and a permanent interest rate buy down. He believed that if he refinanced in the next year, he was going to lose that buy down premium. And I'm thinking to myself, we're two years into this cycle. You just spoke to five loan officers and you think a temporary buy down is a bad idea because you're going to lose the premium. So immediately, you know, went back to the team and I said, Team, I know we think they know. They don't know. And we got to show it in the TCA. We got to show here's market. Here's what it looks like with a permanent buy down. We don't like this one because we think mortgage rates are going to go down. Here's why education. Here's your temporary buy down. If you refinance that loan in six months, you're going to get a prorated portion of that money back, which was applied towards the refinance. And guess what the fourth strategy is? The fourth strategy is what the refinance is going to look like with the lower mortgage balance, because you got the refund of that premium, that seller's funds, and what the uh, what Fannie Mae projects mortgage rates to be. So I feel a little bit like I'm beating a drum that's been beaten for a long time, except just last week, I got a brand new first time home buyer that has no clue how to construct an offer. And his agent's a rock star, and his agent didn't give him the, the advice. So I'd stick with that one until we see rates in the, in the low sixes and high fives. Yeah, you know, the thing is, is that they don't know what you do until you explain to them what you do. And sometimes it requires you explain it to them several times for it to really sink in. I mean, yes. that's a critical mistake that originators make. I want to, um, Dave, let me ask you this quick question. Can we go a little longer or we have a hard stop at the top of the hour? I am going to let you two go longer. I've actually got to jump to a meeting, but Josh, I'm going to make you the um, host and you guys keep it rocking. And, and I, I just can't emphasize enough, guys, how much I hope you guys lean into this new community in the mortgage space. So Tim offered to go longer. He's going to rock it out. I'm going to jump. Really appreciate you both. Thanks, brother. And uh, rock it out, guys. Thank you very much. Have fun in New Orleans, Dave. All right. All right. Okay. So I want to, uh, let me take a couple of things here real quick. So there have been some questions that have popped up in here about, about like scripting for realtors and stuff like that and, and conversions. Is it covered in the loan atlas? Oh my God, yes. Like you have no idea. I mean, I personally have over 25 scripts of, of, the, of that nature in the atlas itself. Ryan Grant has a bunch of stuff that's coming in. We're almost done post-producing all of his. It'll be in, in the next 30 days. Tyler Osby, who's a terrific teacher and originator, tons of scripting for realtors um, and, and point of sale, all that kind of stuff. So Tons and tons of info there. Somebody asked a really important question that I want to address, Josh. And, and I, I know that you are a master of this and I consider myself to be as well, which is the question was, how do I start my day in order to give myself the best possibility for success? So 
I'm going to take a quick stab at that, and I want everybody to listen closely, and then I want you to you to to, to give your rendition to Josh, because I know that this is your wheelhouse too. So, it starts the night before. Your day, your the way your day starts starts the night before, team, and it starts the night before with first you identifying what are the big needle movers that I want to make sure that I execute on tomorrow. What are the one or two things that if I got them done, tomorrow would be a success and I'm not going to compromise anything, no matter what, to make sure those get done. Now, why is that important? Because number one, it moves the needle, but number two, it gives you self-confidence. Don't underestimate the self-defeating experience of having the intention of getting something done, like calling five past clients in your database or calling on all your leads or going on a couple of, you know, going on a caravan and then you blow it off because a fire comes up and then the day is over and you feel defeated because you look back on your day and you're like, wow, I didn't accomplish the things that I wanted to accomplish. So it starts the night before with the identification process of what is it that I need to do to move the needle tomorrow. Now, the next discipline is to make sure that you carve out, and Josh and I both do this, one full hour minimum to work on that needle mover before you open up your life to the outside world. So my world, the way that it looks is this. I don't put anything in my, I was just telling Anitza this yesterday, Josh, because we're just getting used to working together. I said, you know, I don't, I don't start work until nine. That doesn't mean I don't start working until nine. Some days I don't, but some days I will start working as early as 7.30 or eight, but it's in quiet time, working on that big needle mover. I did this yesterday morning from seven to nine. I got a lot of crap done before I opened up my world to the outside and let calendars be filled up and phone calls come in, text messages, had everything on quiet and worked on those two needle movers. Now you say, well, I can't get up in time. Well, you know, now's where tough choices need to be made. You know, I, I used to marvel at you, bro, all the time. How does he get up at four in the morning and drink his mushroom tea and get his workout in and get his meditation and all that kind of stuff? Like, I can't get up that early. You'd be proud of me, man. I was up at 4.30 this morning. I actually love it. I've been going to bed at about 8.30, 9 o'clock. I've been cutting down on the drinking. I've been getting a great night's sleep. I get up at 4.30. I start my day by setting my intentions of the energy that I want to experience today. What, what, who do I want to be today? How do I want to show up in my world at work with my colleagues, when I'm dialoguing with a referral partner, when I'm dialoguing with a client, and I visualize that in my meditation. I meditate, I raise my energy, then I have my breakfast, I do my yoga, I get my workout in, then I open up my life to the outside world. So I'm gonna hit pause there and toss it over to you because I know you have more to add. Yeah, I'll just really quickly talk about bookending our days. And, we are the manifestation of our decisions. And we either decide that we're going to watch one more Netflix series, which I'm, I'm like, I'm human, right? I do that with my wife too. I just do that on Friday or Saturday. Um, we're going to make a decision that we're going to watch the rest of the football game, which by the way, is going to be recapped on ESPN the next morning if you don't catch it. Um, but those decisions to eat away at the end of our day are causing us to eat away at the beginning of our next day. And that means that we enter into the next day in a reactive behind schedule, perhaps a little dehydrated and hungover. And then we go through our day in reactive mode all day long. And we get to the end of the day and we just want to sit down on the TV and watch another series. Rinse and repeat. It's a program. I got a voicemail from an originator um, the other day that said, I listened to a podcast that you did 30 days ago. I turned my schedule back. I've been up every weekday since at 4 a.m. He says, I can't even believe the change in my life in 30 days. It's like I just stepped out of my previous life and I'm in my new life because you enter every single day at cause, not at effect, not in reactive mode, super intentional, intentional at the wake up time intentional about the things that go into your body, intentional about the things that go into your mind, intentional about your intentions for the day, intentional working on your business before you work in your business, intentional about getting the exercise, intentional having a few minutes to connect with your kids. And trust me, if you control from the wake up time 
till you step into the office and you start prospecting or leading meetings, everything changes for you because the people around, you know, you're in charge. You are in full control and cause of your universe and the people around you see it as well. And everything changes. And I'll just say one last thing because I mentioned bookends. So when we think about controlling our mornings, we actually need to think about controlling our afternoons and evenings first, because it's impossible to control the mornings if you don't control the previous evening. So it starts with having a time in your day. There's, a, there's an appointment in my day every day at 5.30 p.m. that says, go home and play with your family. They need you. And that's my key. I need to I need to detach and do my best to get out of work mode, into play mode, into fun mode, into dad mode, to the best of my ability. I'm human. I make mistakes. And then we have a, a routine at night, which ends up with me in bed by 7.30 and a cup of tea and a book. And by 8, I'm out and the alarm goes off by 7.30 or 4 a.m. every day. I've been doing it for 10 years. And I promise you the abundance, the team, the things that I've been able to accomplish would not even be nearly, uh, wouldn't be the same reality if I hadn't have made that decision. So you just have to decide, do you want the life you really want? Or do you want the next Netflix documentary? Do you want to watch the fourth quarter? And I would just offer, you can watch the Netflix documentary on Sunday afternoon. You can catch the fourth quarter on ESPN the next morning. What you really want is the life that you want to create. I have to watch the fourth quarter if I have a wager on it. So sometimes I'm going to <laughs> bed at about 8.30 or 8.45. But but your, everything you said is so spot on. And you've actually been my teacher in a lot of ways in this. I mean, I, I, I thought that I was great at executing on my morning routine and all of that. And, and I was pretty darn good by all standards. But then there was the Josh Metal standard. And I'm, I'm kind of tracking right there with you getting into bed, like I said, around 8.30 or so and, and doing a little reading and then getting a great night's sleep. And it just feels wonderful. So I want to close with everybody by asking this question and this is a business question but it ties directly into what josh was was saying just now so which loan originator is going to be more successful in connecting with real estate agents accounts financial planners and borrowers mm. and at the highest level of effectiveness the originator who has abundant energy a clear mind and is confident and on purpose or the one who is constantly feeling like they're treading water, catching up and depleted. The originator that has the best energy is gonna be the one that's most magnetic and attractive. So that's why managing your energy and putting these routines into place, and that's why I'm grateful for the question because it's such an important question. In a market, and Josh Burris, who's also on our faculty, and if you haven't listened to his episode of the 360 Experience podcast with me, he was terrific. He identified something in the very beginning, Josh Metal, now I'm talking to, that is so important. He said, in a market where some things are just flat out beyond your control because interest rates are so high, seek to focus on the things that you can control, mm. like getting a good night's sleep, like eating healthy, like getting your workout in, like making sure that when you wake up in the morning, you have a routine. Nobody can take those things away from you. And in a market when it's tough, there that's when it's most important. Super well said. And, I, and just I'll just maybe wrap with the last comment. I'll go back to what, what I opened with and then there was the tech issue. But what your mind can conceive and believe it can achieve but you have to take the time out of your schedule to create that future vision, to go through that business planning tool and say, I can actually see how if I could do these activities, it will impact the numbers and I could create that income and I could create that life for myself, but nobody else can do that for you. You have to create that vision. You have to create the belief that you can get there by going through the business planning tool. And then you got to set your day and your schedule to execute as we started um, with the, the saying across the top, the genius is always in the execution. So get after it. We got a great year ahead team. Thank you everybody for being on this call. It was super nice to help and teach you and we'll look forward to continuing to do so. Josh, thanks brother. Thanks everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.